I, I've just come back from there and it, it's something again that shakes you to the soul. Um, so what, what is that? What, you know, we know the facts, but you know, when we went there, what did we find? Firstly, we found that uh, he, he killed a man whom he, had, he never knew. He probably met him for the first time in his life the morning that he killed him. And he killed him only because he wanted a Muslim to kill in this, uh, in this very public way with a video camera. Uh, who was this man? Uh, you know, again, uh, he was a, what we call a circular migrant. And I, I don't think many of us acknowledge the suffering of this kind. There are 100 million circular migrants in this country. These are people who in order to keep their families alive, uh, travel out and live in very hard, work very hard, live in very austere, difficult circumstances, sometimes thousands of miles away from home. And they do this in order to save money and send, 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 send money home. And he was doing this from the age of 14. He was now 48 years old. And so in a sense, here's a man who had dedicated his entire life in, in hard labor, lonely hard labor, so that his family could survive. And in that he was like a hundred million other people in this country who we never remember and, 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 and forget. So that's another, uh, another thing. He had just a little earlier, you know, a little while back elevated himself a little bit, so he'd become a small labor contractor. So he used to organize uh, groups of labor. And that is probably what took his life. Uh, so uh, this person got to know and so he got his number and he probably called him to this plot of land uh, in order to, uh, uh, in the name of, you know, uh, organizing some construction work. And once once he reached there, he used his own pickaxe and hacked him to death as we know and sprinkled him with petrol and killed him as his 14-year-old uh, nephew was uh, videotaping it. And then he went on to this anti-Muslim rant and he did a couple of other such videos. This was one of the very rare times that we decided to also visit the accused person's family. And that was really hard as well. So we went to uh, his home. Obviously, they, they were not welcoming, uh, but we felt it was important to do so. Uh, uh, in the first visit, my, when my colleagues did, they were saying that, you know, he, uh, this the person who did the killing has a mentally challenged little girl. One, in one of the videos, he's actually carrying her in his lap. And uh, she was blissfully unaware of what was going on. And she was quite a charming child and she was touching everybody's feet. And, uh, and here was the family. And the family was, uh, of course, there were three brothers who lived together in a joint family. Um, apparently, his he was also in the marble business, but it had, after demonetization it collapsed. And after that he used to spend all his time watching these videos, most of them, these Hindutva hate videos. Uh, that's what his family said. His family said what he did was wrong. But they also said that his, his, his uh, mission against what they called love jihad was just. Now, we asked, what, what do you mean by this love jihad? And they talked about three, just three Muslim Hindu alliances. One was 11 years ago, one was nine years ago, and one was seven years ago. You know, that is all. Then we met the, the girl, who was, the woman who was involved in the alliance of seven years ago, because he mentioned her by name. And the poor woman, she was a young woman, She'd gone when she was very young, she spent two years and she came back on her own. And she said, I'm trying so desperately to rebuild my life uh, and by this kind of publicity, uh, you know, so I'm not even mentioning her name here. Then we went to the site where he had been killed. I was shocked, you know, I'm, I'm continuously shocked by the complete deliberate non-professionalism of the police. Now when Sunanda Pushkar was killed. They kept that hotel room locked, the suite locked for for for, for many, more than a year, I think, at huge costs. Here, such a big crime has happened. They have done nothing to coordinate off, nothing to sanitize. So the evidence is is completely destroyed. We walked into the site, 
and what we found was there's a pack of six stray dogs and they were sniffing the very place where uh, where he had been burnt and just made 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 us sick both in the stomach and the soul that this is what we were doing and we didn't know what to do and so we thought we had to do something so i had john dial and kavita shrivastav uh, with me uh, and so then we decided that we we'll, we went and collected some flowers wild flowers from around and we knelt there with the flowers and we said some some respect to the man who has died we met members of the muslim community and uh, they were saying that they are in absolute terror now uh, uh, they said that you know they just don't know how they going to continue to engage and live uh if this kind of violence is happening and they were saying that you know the community is living together our children are growing up uh, boys will be going to college uh, they'll be studying suppose some boy has a friendship with a girl uh, uh, from another community which which can very well happen is this going to happen to us are they going to attack us you know how can we live in these circumstances and then you have a complete absence of remorse you have uh, whatsapp messages and groups in which the local mp and the member of um, mla who is also a minister are members they call him sher sher mewar which is the lion of of mewar uh, making him a hero they've done a fund raising crowd funding uh, drive for him uh, when we were there uh, a lawyer had come from jaipur with a big tikka and uh, he was there to defend him uh, and, and, and so on uh, and the, you know for for such a big crime to have been happened in a district town the, it again strikes me that there's no remorse there's no you know from the rest of the people how how is the rest of that society living with such a major hate crime in their midst uh, does it not in affect them is it only a concern of the muslims there uh um, so many yeah it was really devastating and once again the sense that you know what kind of society have we built in fact there was only one moment where we felt some kind of relief and that was when we went to the you know the, the, there are these four small rooms uh, which they have hired where 17 of these uh, bengali uh, workers live and so they hired it from a hindu landlord the hindu landlord is also a sort of working class person uh, so he's an auto driver himself and he built this small thing on his block and he hired them out so we asked him what he felt and he was very clear he said that uh, afrazul was a very hard working man and to kill him in the way that he was killed is a great uh, great sin he said and then he added he said ke is uh, इस दुनिया में सिर्फ एक जाति है और वो है इंसानियत की जाति और कोई जाति नहीं है दैट इज ओनली वन कास्ट वन रिलीजन इन दिस वर्ल्ड एंड दैट इज दर्ल्ड दैट इज द कास्ट ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटी आई दे शुड बी नो अदर कास्ट एंड इट वॉज जस्ट वेरी टचिंग दैट ही सो ही इज नॉट ही इज नॉट आस्क दैम टू लीव ही सर आई विल कंटिन्यू टू कीप दैम इन माई इन माई हाउस इन शॉर्ट एंड and in fact i wrote about this uh, when i came back and i ended with this story and i added one word that i said i wish one day i uh, we would hear our prime minister say uh, the words that uh, uh, this 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 auto rickshaw driver said that it was a great sin to kill the man he was a good man and and that there is only one jati in this country uh, one religion and that is the religion of humanity